He says, you don't force anything on people. You just give them information and allow them to make up their own minds. And that's exactly what happens on 180. You mm-hmm. see people given information. Yeah. They have a completely different perspective, and they change their minds, and they'll change the way they vote. They're so adamant about being mm-hmm. pro-life. Mm-hmm. I think the average person doesn't really have a firm grasp of his epistemological system of thought, so he's going to be lacking self-consistency along the way. And, and, and part of apologetics has got to be to question their, their basic foundations for their thinking, It'd point them back to why they think what they think. And then point out the internal inconsistencies with it, which is really what you do with the life issue. Like, you know, what are you doing? You're inconsistent here. You know, on the one hand, you don't want to slaughter innocent babies, but over here, you're slaughtering innocent babies. You're pointing out an inconsistency about their way of thinking, aren't you? Absolutely. And at the same time, appealing to their conscience. Everyone has this yes. inbuilt, God given knowledge of right and wrong. Mm. And it's very, very powerful. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, that's why we produced the 180 course I got with Kay Arthur and Randy Elkhorn and Kirk Cameron. And we produced a 180 course for churches and individuals and groups to go through and learn how to speak about the subject of abortion and to address the conscience regarding people's salvation. And that comes with uh, two DVD teachings, uh, Randy Elkhorn's book and a 64-page study guide. And and we've got it down to a really low price. It's $10 for the whole lot of those things and plus 100 uh, 180 tracks to give out to people, so we're very excited about that. Ray, I have to say, you're one of the most effective on the streets, get the word out kind of guys for the gospel of Christ in the 21st century. I don't want to puff you up or anything like this, but let me ask you this, and hopefully this will help minister to other folks to get out there. What what motivates you to, to do what you're doing? It really is this explosion I've got in me called gratitude. Yeah, okay. Um, I, I can't stop the fire. Uh-huh. Uh, it, it started when, I, when God saved me from death and hell, mm-hmm. and it was explosive the night that he did, and it's still getting bigger. Mm-hmm. And I want to do everything I can to, to love God and serve God and please God and love people. And, and it's hand in hand with an empathy. You see, I didn't know why I was alive before I was a Christian. I had everything I could want as a, as a non-Christian. My own home, beautiful wife. I had a surf shop, went surfing any time I wanted enough money for what I wanted to do, and I thought, what's next? A big car that's going to make my friends hate me, and I, I thought, you know, I'm waiting around to die. That's all I'm doing. I've got nothing else to do but enjoy life, and I'm waiting around to die. Uh-huh. And I went to a doctor, and I thought, I'm at least going to try and extend my life, and I looked down at the doctor as he smoked his cigarette and looked like death warmed up, and I thought, he's got no answer. So I was just left in utter despair until the light came into my darkness, and God saved me from death and hell, mm-hmm. and I was so so grateful, and I'm so grateful. That which I can't put into words, I put into works. You know, Ray, I, I think some people want to win, admit, witness the gospel out there, but it's really tough. It takes a lot of guts to get out there and talk about abortion, talk about sin, talk about how they have come short of the glory of God and they've sinned against the holy God. I mean, that's the bad news. It's hard to bring out the bad news. How do you do that? Well, it really is. It's like anything you have conquered in life. When you, when you first started in life, you crawled, and then you walked, and then you rode a bike. Mm-hmm. You had to apply yourself to riding a bike. When you mm-hmm. got in a car the first time and grabbed that wheel, you realized you could kill something with someone with this vehicle. But as you became proficient and skilled in it, you can now talk on a phone, eat a sandwich, and uh, sing along while you're driving your car with one finger. <laughs> yeah. It just happens like that. <laughs> and it's the same with evangelism. The Bible says, study to show yourself approved. A workman that needs not be ashamed. If you're ashamed, that is, you don't know what to say, then you probably haven't studied it. So that's why we've got this 180 course to help you study it, to learn what to say. You can bring the subject of God up without bringing the subject of God up by just saying to someone, what do you think happens after someone dies? And you'll see this in the 180 movie again and again, where I ask people, what do you think happens when someone dies? And there's no offense because I haven't mentioned God or Jesus or the Bible, the blood of Christ, hell or repentance or judgment day. None of those things that make people feel uncomfortable. I've just mm-hmm. asked from them for their opinion. Mm-hmm. And you see people open up like a flower in the noonday sun uh, as, as light begins to come to them. So anyone can do this. All it takes is for you to apply yourself and to want to do it and to study it. You have to be aware of the fact, though, that some 35% of Americans have committed an abortion. Uh, if you include the morning after pills, it's up to 45% now uh, since the morning after pill. that's usage has doubled since 2006. So, so figure about 45% of Americans have aborted their children. Uh, do you think people want to be forgiven for murdering their children? 
And I know that's a loaded question, but uh, you know, how would you answer that? Do people really want to be forgiven for murdering their children? Yes and no. Um, guilt is a very, very powerful force. It drives mm-hmm. men to drink and drives some to suicide. Mm-hmm. And it can sit on your back and grow like a monkey on your back and become heavier and heavier. And so people don't even realize the guilt that they're carrying, like in Pilgrim's Progress. I remember seeing uh, Christian, or whatever he was called before he was called Christian, climb up that hill and look at Calvary's cross. And once that burden rolled off his back, he realized uh, what, what, what he'd been carrying and stood strong and tall. So people are blind and lost. Their understanding's dark and they're alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that's in them. And what we have to do really, because the Bible says there's none that seek after God, is cause their inbuilt will to live, their fear uh, to do its duty. Um, If you were standing on the edge of a plane 10,000 feet up and you had no concern about putting a parachute on, I would hang you out the plane by your ankles for five seconds and pull you back in and say, how do you feel now? (laughs) Say, whoa. (laughs) And then I'd hope that your God-given fear or your will to live would cause you to put on the parachute. Mm -hmm. So the way to get someone to come to Christ and find forgiveness is to hang them out eternity by their ankles for a minute. Let them realize the law of God will do what the law of gravity will do to them. Grind them to powder on the day of judgment. And and, uh, their God-given will to live and their inbuilt fear will cause them to flee from wrath to come and trust in the Savior. Very powerful words. Very powerful. And that's the gospel of Jesus Christ, friends. Uh, And it transforms lives by the millions around the world. And we trust that uh, more are to come in the days and the weeks to come. And uh, may God use this movie, 180movie.com, to make that happen. Uh, How how do folks get a hold of this, Ray? I know it's coming out Sunday, but uh, give folks a, a sense for how to access yeah, they be good to go and watch it and see that I'm telling the truth about it being very powerful. Yeah. Um, and watch it for yourself. Yeah. And and, uh, and you can get them for a dollar each. They're, <laughs> a, they're a, a value of $10 if you get 10 at once. We want wow. people to give these away. Uh, I gave away 100 around a neighborhood day before yesterday, mm-hmm. despite the uh, angry dogs that are, <laughs> that are waiting up some people's driveways. Uh-huh. But it's, it's a wonderful way to get the gospel and the pro-life message into the hands of this world. If you go outside a university or a college or a high school when the kids are coming out and give a free DVD away, they're going to snap it up yeah. uh, because it's got this $10 perceived value. And they'll watch it too because it's got an award-winning uh, symbol on the front and it says shocking video and uh, all great endorsements on the back. So this is a great way I to get I can't believe you're getting hands. these things out for a buck, Ray. It's incredible. Yeah, we're very excited to be able to do that. Yeah. Wow, you can hardly produce it for a buck, but uh, we've got to get the word out, and folks can get access to these things at 180movie.com. Is that right? Everybody go to 180movie.com. That's right. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Ray Comfort, again, on the Generations Radio broadcast. Always enjoy having you, Ray. God bless your ministry, man. Well, thank you so much. Boy, folks, I'll tell you what, Ray Comfort always motivates me. I mean, that guy is busy. He's getting 200,000 of these videos out in the next couple of weeks, and I want you to pray for his ministry, and hopefully you've been encouraged as well to continue to get out there and get involved. Get the word out. you got a great gospel for a nation that's uh, sunk into the sin of abortion and many, many other self-centered, materialistic aims for life, and none of these things are going to satisfy. Let's get out there. Let's get the word out there. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the only 